Okay, this little talk is about what are significant figures and why are they important. So the idea of significant figures is that we can only measure things to a certain degree of precision, right? We cannot have an infinite number of digits after a decimal point in a measurement. So let's take a little example using our little outlined guy here on the side. How tall is this person to the right? Now, obviously, we need something to standardize it against. We need a ruler or a scale in which we can compare his height to so that we can determine whether he's, you know, a meter tall, two meters tall, 50 centimeters tall. So let's say I give you a rod. This rod represented by the black line is exactly one meter in height. So if I look at that rod and I say, okay, if that rod is one meter in height, I can make an estimate as to how tall he is because I can stack one on top of the other and I can look at it and I can say, well, he's not two meters tall. He's definitely greater than one and a half meters tall. He's probably roughly somewhere around 1.75 meters tall. Now, how precise is that measurement I just gave you? I can't say with certainty he's 1.75 meters tall. I could say with certainty he's not two meters tall. I know that for certain. I also know for certain he's over one meter tall, right? Because that's how long my rod is. But everything beyond that's an estimate because I have nothing to demarcate where one and a half meters tall is. I can estimate where it's at. I can roughly guess where half is, but I don't have any evidence of where half is. So anything beyond he's greater than one meter, but shorter than two meters is an estimate. So we take his line across, we draw, there's his head. I'm still going to say 1.75, you know, good estimate, right? Greater than 1.5, about halfway to 2. Well, let's say I add 0.5 meter demarcations on the ruler. Okay, now with certainty I can say he is less than 2 meters tall and greater than 1.5 meters tall. I'm betting now, once I see this mark, that he's also greater than 1.75 meters because that height looks a little bit farther than halfway between the 0.5 and the full one there on that second meter. So I'm going to guess he's something more like 1.8 meters tall. right? But again, everything beyond taller than 1.5, less than 2 point is an estimate of some degree. Well, let's add 0.25 demarcations in. So now I can say with certainty he is definitely greater than 1.75 meters tall. He's still less than two obviously, but now I feel a lot more confident in my decision that he's about 1.8 meters tall. Notice every time I added more demarcation to the system it gave me a more precise measurement. All right? The better my tool to measure the better my measurement becomes the more accurate my measurement becomes. Okay. So accuracy and pre precision depend on the level of precision of the tool you're using. The better the tool you're using, the better your measurement. Let's take another way to look at this. Let's look at a rectangular solid. Okay, so this is an outline of a rectangular solid. Now, as you know, because I'm guessing you've probably started on your pre-lab for lab report one. If you haven't, I hope you do soon. We know that we can determine the volume of this rectangular solid by taking the length times the width times the height. So I just need three measurements to get the volume. Well, let's try that. Let's say I have three different people measure the sides. Okay, I have three different people measure the sides. To the first one, I give this rod. This rod measures exactly one meter. Okay, that's what they're going to use to measure the height. To the second person, the one measuring the width, I'm going to give this rod. It measures it in 0.25 meter increments. And to the third side, the guy measuring length, I'm going to give a rod that measures in two meter increments. 
Now note, the two meter and the one meter have no other demarcations than the entire length of the rod. Okay. So again, we run into that same conundrum. The person who's measuring the width, the green bar, they have the most precise tool. They will get the most accurate measurement of their dimension. Now the person who's measuring the height has the orange bar. Theirs will be pretty good, right? They have a meter stick, so they will be able to get within the nearest meter. The person on the length, though, has two meter stick. So they're going to be a lot more limited in how precise their measurement is. So when I take these three measurements from three different people and I multiply them together, the length, the width, and the height, to get the final cubic volume of this rectangular solid, is it going to be as precise as the measurement the green rod gives me? No, it can't be, right? The person who's measuring the green side, they have the most precise tool, so they will give me the most precise and most accurate measurement, but the overall measurement of volume is not controlled by that precision. The overall measurement of the volume is controlled by the worst device up there, right? Because I can't be any more accurate on the length side, the blue side of this rectangular solid, than some estimate between zero and two meters. That's a pretty broad range. Now I can make an estimate, you know, I whip that thing over one more time and I'll say, well, it's not quite four meters because that's obviously not two entire blue lengths. It's probably somewhere around, that second one's probably 1 1.8 or so, so it's probably 3.8 total. But that is an estimate, right? That is an estimate I'm making. That's a big estimate I'm making because I don't have any demarcations on that entire two meter length. So I'm eyeballing how much of that two meters I'm covering in that second unit. And that leads us to kind of where I want to leave it in this little short introduction to significant figures. Significant figures can be summed up in one simple statement. We can never be more precise than our least precise measurement. Okay? So back when we look Sorry about that. Back when we look at that previous box, we can never get a better measurement than that estimation we made on the two meter stick. Okay. So next time we'll look at how we do mathematics with significant figures, how we actually count significant figures and how we use them in math.